So today I'm going to review the Motorola H30 and see if it's worth its price or not. So in the design department, I have to say I like it, but I don't love it. Because we have on the one side matte blue, which I love. This color does though remind me of the OnePlus 7 Pro, which is positive. But then on the other hand, we have this generic looking camera bump and the naming itself, Motorola H30. This phone doesn't even have a curved screen. Weird naming besides though, something you will immediately notice is how thin it is and how lightweight it is. It's only 155 grams light, which is less than my S21 and that phone is even smaller. And the size of this phone is a right balance between not too big and not too small. It's S20 FE levels. Now moving on to the camera department, we have a 50 megapixel main sensor paired with a 50 megapixel ultra wide and a two megapixel macro sensor. I'm just gonna ignore the macro camera because it doesn't take good photos. Now the main sensor though, does take very good photos for its price, which is $400. But now here I'm comparing it with the $700 S21. Of course it's not as good because that phone is more expensive. Especially in zoom you notice that because they took a macro camera instead of a zoom lens. Odd choice honestly. It can only zoom up to 10x while the S21 can zoom up to 30x. And for the ultra wide it's basically the same as for the main sensor. So the camera overall is really great for a $400 phone. It's about on par with the OnePlus Nord 2, but it's not outstanding. It's not like it can beat a $600 phone. But if you like outstanding videos like this, I mean, a sub would be appreciated. No, seriously, my goal was 50 subscribers by the end of 2022, but we're already at 60 now. Well, I guess then the next goal is 100 subscribers then. But I mean, just not looking at the numbers. If you enjoy my content, just subscribe then. Either way, back to the video. So something this phone isn't outstanding at is the battery life. So we have a 4,020 million power cell, which isn't the biggest we ever seen. It's definitely not the smallest because we have the iPhone SE 2022, which has like a, what, like 2,000 million power cell or something like that. But then on the other hand, we have like the A53 with a 5,000 million power cell, which lost you easily two days. But Motorola did get a lot out of this hardware. Not as much as Apple did, but a solid amount. So you can get through about one and a half days of use. And it charges up fairly fast as well with 30 watt charging. And that takes you from zero to 100% in about one hour. One feature that the Motorola is missing is the wireless charging, which isn't a big deal for me, but for some it may be. So before we get to the highlight of this phone, somebody has commented on the last video that there is something new about this GPS. I haven't found out a use case for it, but if you have one, then comment down below. Now let's come to this brilliant screen. So we have a 6.5 inch 144 hertz AMOLED screen with pretty small bezels and a tiny hole punch for the selfie camera. And as you might expect, it's a great screen. It's bright enough to see outside and it can now close some phones that are double the price like the S21. And it's flat, so a another bonus. It is only a 1080p display, but it isn't a bad thing because it's only a 6.5 inch screen. Also, the fingerprint scanner is very fast here and very reliable. It's about as good as the Realme GT2 Pro's one and that has one of the best fingerprint scanners. So overall, I think the screen is very good and especially for its price, it is one of the best. Now the performance is also very good on this phone because we have a Snapdragon 778G Plus, which honestly is a horrible name for a chip but it delivers. Because you have a very lightly skinned software, it doesn't struggle at all with any performance issues or something like that. You also get eight gigabytes of RAM and 100 or 256 gigabytes of storage, which isn't expandable, but that isn't a big surprise. 
What also isn't a big surprise is that I like Motorola software. It's basically Android 12 with a couple features integrated. And it's very clean and stock looking, which I enjoy coming from a Samsung phone, which looks like it still has Android 11 on it. But if there's something to watch out for on this phone, then it is the software update situation. So you're getting two years of full Android updates and three years of security patches. Now that we've covered everything relevant, what do I think of this phone? If you want a non-pre-owned smartphone for $400, I think this is the way to go. And there isn't a better, more balanced phone in that price range. Now, that doesn't mean that this phone is perfect at everything. I mean, it doesn't get long software updates. It has a plastic frame, which isn't very durable. And it doesn't have wireless charging, which those are all negatives. But I don't think those are very important negatives. Sure, wireless charging would be a nice to have feature, but it isn't very important for a phone. So all of this considered, it makes it almost a no-brainer for $400. I mean, until the next great value phone comes, like maybe OnePlus Nord 3, whenever that phone's coming out, or one of Xiaomi's dozens of phones, which are always a good deal. But till now, it is the best phone for $400. So that was all of this for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.